what's up? I'm X, and today I'm going to show you the basics of the Colosseum. This will include how I solve certain stacks and situations, as well as tips and tricks and things that I think you should know. Big disclaimer on this video. I use Torva, and I use Ancestral, I use an Elijah, and I use an Eldritch, and a lot of other things in this video. I understand that most players don't have this kind of budget, and that doesn't mean that the content is inaccessible for everybody, but you'll have to take this information and apply it to what you have and what you are capable of. This is just what I do. That doesn't necessarily mean that I think it's correct either, but it is how I got my couple quivers so far. With that out of the way, let's get right into it. The Fortis Coliseum is located in the east side of Varlamor, and you can't use the bank inside until you've got some waves and honor under your belt. Use the bank outside until then. For gear, you can use a hybrid of really good ranged attacking armor and melee gear. You'll need one of your styles to be melee if you want to fight the boss, as he's weak to slash, so a scythe, whip, and tentacle, whatever, is all fine. You can also do the melee only method if you'd like, but personally I use this setup here. I spend about 96% of my time using magic, so I opted into bringing more swaps for it, but you can use whatever fits your playstyle. Upon entry, I like to drop some potions towards the middle so I can swap my gear without being told that my inventory's full. These potions will not despawn. In the center of the room, you'll be greeted by Minimus, who will give you your first of 12 modifiers. There are 12 waves, and after each wave, until after the 12th wave, you'll have to choose a debuff for one of your runs. Some of them are rather inconsequential, but they will be up for you to decide. There are 14 handicaps, and here are the ones to look for and the ones to ignore. A tip for your modifiers. Some modifiers have three levels to them, and some of them are one-offs. Throughout your runs, you'll find yourself cornered with bad options. To help avoid this, try choosing modifiers that level up that you don't mind. I typically like to use Solar Flare, Myopia, and Blasphemy. Wave 1, you'll almost always choose Blasphemy. The game favors offering you level ups over new mods, so I can sort of expect that Blasphemy 2 will be offered to me on Wave 2. If I can then take Myopia, for example, then I will have two mods selected that will offer me an increase. This will increase the chance that I have something safe to pick, but if option 3 is a good one, then I can rely on taking Blasphemy or Myopia the next round. So that's your mod rundown, but what happens when I'm in here? After you choose your mod and hit confirm, the wave will begin. The waves are not random, and you can install the Colosseum plugin to better track what's coming and when. When starting a wave, we stand on this tile here, and then just a second before the monsters spawn, we'll sprint up behind this pillar. This will cause most of the monsters to get stuck behind the pillar while you pick off the few who didn't. Every wave, you will also have to deal with these little Fremenit guys. One of each attack style. You will always hit your max hit on them so long as you attack them with the right style. Mage for the melee, range for the mage, and melee for the ranger. As of the time of recording, the ranger can only hit once, so she is a low priority. The melee is very accurate and very scary, and the major is as well. They can only attack you when standing still, and they have a very short attack distance. So to keep them from attacking, simply run to the wall and back to the pillar, and run to the wall and back to the pillar while picking them off to avoid damage. You can basically ignore the ranger for the most part. At a certain time threshold, if your wave is not completed, there will be reinforcements, in the form of this jaguar guy who declaws you with a max of over 100 damage, or this minotaur who can punch you big damage and will fully heal any mobs around him that he can see. These two are also accompanied by a serpentine mage in some of the waves. Now that's everything that can happen in a wave, so how do we do the waves? There aren't so many monsters, but just so you can't say that I didn't tell you, this guy uses range, this guy uses mage, this guy uses all three from bottom to top order. This guy uses mage, this guy uses melee, this guy uses melee. Pray accordingly. The monsters are also pretty fat and unable to walk through the pillar to get to you. I have tiles marked to remind me which sides of the pillar are safe spotable for monsters. I'm going to link all of my tiles in the description in a paste bin. This is great for the jaguar and minotaur to get stuck on. At the start of a wave, we will run up at the time that I mentioned before and assess if we have to move from our area or not, if it's too dangerous. If it's too dangerous, we will stay behind and pick off the Fremenix and any monsters we can kill in the meantime. If you cannot reach your monster, you can also stand here, for example, to drag them closer to you. If your area IS unsafe, equip your tanky melee gear, pray magic, and piety, and book it to another pillar, hopefully shuffling them in a safer way. Rangers will usually hit zeros on tanky melee armor, but they can and will hit 40s, so be ready for that. The mages are very accurate, though, so we will have to pray against them. You survived the wave, and now there's a bunch of guys behind a pillar, great job. At this point, if we're completely safe, we will await the reinforcements and deal with them to not get blindsided. After that, we will assess our stack. And I don't want to scare you here, but we're going to go over the basics of same, 
and off-ticking monsters to your benefit. We need to manipulate the times in which monsters see you so that you can properly prey against them. We will do so with this pillar. Let's say, for instance, that you have a manticore and a ranger, as you will most commonly have this situation. What do we do? If the manticore has not yet shown his attack style, it will need to see you to decide that. So I use this as an opportunity to get some damage off on the ranger. You can get about two hits off typically before the manticore will start his attack cycle. Now the manticore has shown me what it's going to use, so I pop back behind the pillar and plan out my next move. If the monsters are the same attack style, I will simply step one tile out of the pillar and they will see me at the same time. In the case of the manticore, just pray the first thing, then the other two right after, right back to praying the first thing. You can choose which one you'd like to kill first, but be careful not to be dragged in. If they're not the same attack style, we will need to off-tick them, which is the fancy term for make them hit at different times. We're going to stand in the center of the pillar and click the backmost monster. You have to click the backmost monster, otherwise monsters will see you at the same time. You can change the monster you're attacking after you've begun this cycle if you would like. So here I will pray mage, as the thing in the back will see me first. Then I will pray range right afterwards. After the ranger has done his animation, I'm swapping over prayers. Do be careful of the javelin colossus, as every five attacks he will throw a javelin into the air that will land on you if you don't move from the tile. This can disrupt your prayer flicking at times, so just be aware of it. If you have a stack of three or more, put your tanky armor on and pray against whatever will see you, but always prioritize the majors. Running to this tile will shuffle the stack in a more digestible way. If you're panicking and don't know what to do, put on your tank gear and run to another pillar. Don't be afraid to use supplies, as that is how you are going to learn. And if you need to, everything in here can be blood barrage to get your HP back, and don't be ashamed for doing it. Your quiver can take as long as it takes you. Sometimes certain stacks are really just not solvable for an idiot like myself, and I will run to a new pillar to reorder even if I wasn't in any immediate danger. That's the gist of the Colosseum, but here are some niche tips and tricks that might help you out. The SGS or the Eldritch spec on the Fremenix is a huge prayer in HP regen, as you'll always hit your max and save supplies. Please be aware of your 6 hour logout time. There is currently no warning when going in that you will be logged out, and when I was fiercely grinding this content in the first few days, I lost many really good runs to being logged out mid-wave. Any logging out in the Colosseum will end that run. If your next wave is looking really difficult, Consider claiming the loot and restarting. You'll kick yourself more for staying stupidly, but there's definitely a case for staying for the practice. For the modifier Myopia, when using magic, the distance is only impacted if you're using a charged staff like a trident or a shadow. Using an ancient spell will not reduce your attack distance at all. Special attacking with the Eldritch is also unaffected. Also, auto-casting with a staff also works. You will be unable to move when Minimus spawns between waves, so plan accordingly, if you're far from your starting tile or if you've left things on the ground. Don't compare yourself to others. Your clanmate might be doing a melee-only strategy and have a sub-20 minute PB here, but it doesn't matter. Take your time and get it however you need to. As for the boss, he's really weak to slash. And really tanky to range and mage. Most find it easy to stand in the middle of him for the fight, but you can do the same method on the edges. He has two auto attacks that will take up the majority of the fight. Both of these attacks have an attack 1 and an attack 2. His spear and his shield. For his first spear attack, you'll need to stand one tile back. For his first shield attack, you'll have to step one tile back as well. For his second spear, you'll have to go diagonally. For his second shield, you'll have to go back two tiles. He cannot do a second attack without doing the first. Let me show you an example. So here he attacks with a spear. I step one tile back and then I have two options after this. He will either do a shield and reset the pattern, or a spear and I'll have to move diagonally. Here he chooses spear, so I move diagonally. Now he chooses to do a shield, which is just a one tile move back. Then right back to spear. Remember, they have to be consecutive to change. I'm gonna play some boss footage here without talking or anything, and just some auto attacks. Just say to yourself out loud where you'd move in these attacks, just to see if you're right. If you'd like a little bit of practice, I've linked a boss trainer in the description. It's definitely a great tool to get started and get yourself comfortable with him, but it's not perfect. 
He's got two other specials he can do. He has an attack where he shouts overhead a piece of your armor that you must take off before he hits you. And a perfect parry attack where you must pray melee only in specific time frames to avoid damage. The rest of the fight is really just an overwhelming mess of every modifier he'd like to throw at you. A good rule of thumb is just to avoid everything that's yellow. Molgoat Kirby does a phenomenal job, an in-depth look at the boss, and I've linked his video in the description, as mine is not close to as in-depth, and I don't want to mislead you. Please subscribe before you go if this video helps you even a weensy bit, I really appreciate it. I know that the Coliseum is going to be an ever-changing piece of content in this game, but I hope that this guide is a good jumping off point for you. I, if you like this one, like it, comment, subscribe. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.